Howdy folks, this is Big Sam. Welcome back to the Mosin Museum. You know, one of the things that we really love most about our Mosins is that when you really start digging in deep, the variety that you start to uncover is really unparalleled in the gun world. These guns were so well-traveled, uh, even often the same gun was traveled across many, many different places, um, that you really start to find so much weird, well, stuff. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. Uh, for instance, this rifle that I got here is actually one of the big things that really got me interested in Mosin's just because um, once you start looking at a rifle like this, you really start to see why these things can be just so interesting. Um, now this one's pretty crazy because this is a, uh, well first of all this is a Finnish Mosin. It's a 1940 M91 that, that was rebarreled uh, by Tik Kakoski in Finland in 1940, but it's on an antique Russian receiver. Um, but that's not necessarily what makes this one so interesting. The, the receiver itself is actually really cool because it has markings uh, from Russia, obviously, because that's where it was made, but also it has markings from the Austro-Hungarian Empire as well as Czechoslovakia. And then when you combine the fact that the barrel on it was made in Finland and the rear sight was made by Remington, in America, you end up with like five different countries all at least having some impact on this gun. I mean, if that's not multiculturalism, I don't really know what is. Um, but the moral of the story here is that when you pick up a Mosin, you don't really know what to expect because that gun has been places that you have a hard time even imagining. And this gun has even a much more interesting story than these markings can really tell us. These are just sort of uh, the tip of the iceberg. But Mosins have so many cool and interesting markings. Um, and not just kinds like these, even newer models like 9130s, you see all sorts of really crazy wild markings. And again, the variety of markings on these rifles is really just unparalleled. And unfortunately, a lot of the really cool markings, there's just not a lot of good info on. And what I've found over the years is when you want to look for information on some of this stuff, you have to go into a bunch of different places, which is why here on the Mosin Museum, one of the things we're trying to do is basically consolidate all of the available info, um, and a lot of cases unavailable info into uh, one single place, which is why uh, we now have a basically a fundamental guide to markings on the Mosin Museum. Now, this is not a complete guide, um, but it is a good baseline. It gives us a really good starting point. If you go to the link that I have posted in the description, uh, you're going to find our markings webpage, and we currently have over uh, 100 different markings on there that you can go take a look at any time uh, from the comfort of your home or even from your phone, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, it makes things a lot more accessible, especially on the go, than, you know, having to go find some old dusty book somewhere. Um, now, as much as we love books, they're often, again, it's not that convenient to have to go to find five different books just to go dig up info on one marking. So that's, again, that's what we're trying to help solve here at the Mosin Museum, is we're trying to consolidate as much info as we can about Mosins into one place. And we're nowhere near where I wanna be, but I think we have a really good foundation, at least starting with the markings, and we're just gonna go from there, and we're gonna keep on adding more really cool markings um, here over the years. So check back often because we're always updating the website and if you guys have any uh, questions or if you have any feedback uh, i'd love to hear about it if you could think of ways we can uh, improve um, the markings page or really anything else for that matter just send us an email anytime and i'm really excited to see uh really where this whole mosin museum project goes 
because I think we've made a lot of progress here in the relatively short amount of time that we've been going, at least with the website. But man, there is still so much to do. So I'm going to have to get back to it. So that's going to be all she wrote for today, folks. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I don't want you guys to miss out on another cool episode or miss out on some really cool uh, info that, on Mosins that you may not have known about. So make sure to hit that subscribe button. And again, if you guys ever have any questions um, or comments, send me an email anytime. Let me know if you guys have any prayer requests, and we'll see you next time.